Our next um, storyteller, I think you will notice that she is from the South. She lives in Rome, Georgia, and she also takes us on a journey, a journey with her family and herself. Please, let's welcome Jane Owen Cummings. She left out. I grew up in Mississippi. <laughs> but that's okay, Connie. I still love you. <laughs> when my big sister, my mama always said that when my big sister came into the world, she was just beautiful and sparkling. Mama said that when I came into the world, I just wanted to roll up in her skirts. Well, we'd be out somewhere, and she'd say, Now, Jane, honey, go speak to Miss Marguerite Harlow. And I'd say, No, and roll up in those skirts. <laughs> One time she unrolled me, and she said, Jane, honey, don't you worry, because your mama's going to teach you to sparkle. My daddy was right there by her, and he laughed and looked at me and said, Baby girl, baby girl. If anybody can teach somebody to sparkle, it's your mother. Now, when I was six years old, Mama took me to the armory. It was down on the boulevard in my little town. We went up a steep steps to the second floor. It was a big room, and that was Ms. Mitchell's dance studio. Ms. Mitchell took me and put me right in between two little girls. I knew both of them, Bobby Jo Taylor and Judith Ann Reed. Ms. Mitchell stood with her back to us, and she said, little girls, do what I do. Point and point and point, that's good little girls, and point. Then she commanded Miss Willila Gillespie to play the piano. Miss Willila's fingers began to fly over the piano, piano board, and the whole room just filled up with music, and my little body started running and turning, and dancing all over that space until I felt a hand on my shoulder. <laughs> yes, it was Mrs. Mitchell. She said, Jane, come get back in line, <laughs> and you must learn to point, point, point first. <laughs> well, when it came time for the spring recital, Mrs. Mitchell gave me a watering can. It was painted bright yellow. It had the little thin satin ribbons, different colors that were attached to the water spout holes. She said, Jane, in the recital, I want you to hold this watering can. I want you to go across the stage just as soon as the little yellow chickadees have finished and I want you to go right along the edge where we have the decorations, the flowers, and pretend to water the flowers. Stay with the music and point and point and point. And don't you do anything else. <laughs> I didn't. I did exactly what she told me to do. But as soon as I got off of that stage, I found the door that led to the auditorium, and I found my mama. And I got up in her lap as close to her as I could, and I got my head up on her shoulder. And I said, Mama, I don't want to dance anymore. And she said, That's okay, baby. You don't have to have any more dance lessons. When I was eight years old, she took me to Miss Marguerite Harlow to teach me how to play the piano. 
I loved Miss Marguerite Harlow, and I kind of liked playing the piano. I remembered to practice sometimes. <laughs> it was when I was 13 years old, and it was time for the spring recital. Now, the mothers of some of the students would go down to the high school auditorium to decorate. They'd go in the basement and get those white wicker coned baskets and they would put, put them on each side of the stage and then they'd fill them full of magnolia blossoms and magnolia leaves. Now, Wesley, who was the janitor at the school, knew exactly where Miss Marguerite Harlow liked to put the piano. He pushed the baby grand piano to the center and turned it just so. And that night, I got to wear my sister's green net formal evening gown. It was the one that my sister had worn to the Miss Hospitality Contest in Aberdeen, Mississippi. <laughs> and my sister won Miss Hospitality for Aberdeen, and she got to go to the state contest on the Gulf Coast, and my sister won second alternate to the state. <laughs> I had on the dress. I walked out on the stage, I felt beautiful. I sat down at the piano bench and I began to play my piece when I realized I only remembered the introduction. <laughs> but I remembered what my mama had taught me. Any time that you're on stage, you are to make the audience feel comfortable just like you were a guest in their home. And so I played the introduction through six times. <laughs> and I gave a grandioso chord. I stood up and I bowed just like Miss Marguerite had taught me and I smiled at everybody I could. Well, after the recital, <laughs> I looked at my mama, and she knew what I wanted to do. <laughs> she knew I would love to roll up in her skirts, but I was too big. And my daddy looked at me, and he said, baby girl, baby girl, your piano piece was the best one played all night. <laughs> it was by far the shortest one. Well, Mama said I didn't have to have any more piano lessons. <laughs> but she took me down to a beautiful uh, antebellum home on the parkway. And that was where Miss Kay Evans lived. Miss Kay Evans taught expression. Oh, I loved Miss Kay. You know, her house alone was very interesting. We would, I would go in and we'd stop by this picture and she would just tell this story about this ancestor of hers. And, and she'd walk through her little living room and she'd pick up a piece of silver. And I mean, there was a story about that too. I loved her. She had a lot of poems I could memorize and share with my friends. She had what I called readings. I think they're called monologues, too. But I memorized those, and pretty soon I was telling some of them at garden clubs and rotary club. But you know, I was always scared to death before I got up on the stage or before the people. But as soon as I would start with that poem or that reading, I loved it. And as soon as I got off of the stage, even though I was in high school, I still wanted to find my mama and roll up in her skirts. Well, I went off to college. I went to Mississippi State College for Women in Columbus, Mississippi, 25 miles from my hometown. So I went home quite often on the weekends. 
it was in the spring of the year when I was home visiting, and I got a phone call. It was the president of the Exchange Club. And he said, Jane, we would love for you to be in the Miss Aberdeen pageant this spring. I said, just a minute. And I ran for Mama. Mama, I don't want to be in that beauty contest. I, 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 I just can't do it. She said, baby, you don't have to do it. All you have to say is, I can't do it this year. Oh, so I went back to the phone, and I said, oh, thank you for inviting me to be in the contest, but I simply cannot do it this year. Well, Jane, you would be an asset to the program. I said, well, thank you. Are you sure? Oh, yes, sir, but, well, I'll do it next year. <laughs> and you know next year came around. And in the spring, I got that phone call. Jane, you said you would be in the contest. I said, just a minute. I ran for my mama. I said, Mama, it's that man from the exchange club, and he wants me to be in the contest again. And, and I can't do it. She said, why? I said, well, I'm going to Yellowstone. You're going to Yellowstone? What are you going to do in Yellowstone, baby? Well, my friend Bunny Wallace worked out there last year, and she's written her boss that I want to come, and I'm going to get a contract in the mail in the next, uh, next couple of weeks, and I simply can't go. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to clean rooms for the guest. Honey, you're going all the way to Yellowstone to clean up a stranger's room when you don't even clean your own here. <laughs> You can make your own decision about whether you want to be in the contest or not, but we'll talk about Yellowstone later. Well, I went back, and I, it dawned on me. Yellowstone was in the summertime, and this contest was in April. So I told him that I'd be glad to do it. My mother was very excited. She says, oh, honey, we got to plan your talent. And I said, Mama, I'm going to go back to school and think about it. And when I come home next weekend, we'll work on it. When I got back to MSCW, I knew what I wanted to do. If I was going to be in that contest and I didn't have to win it, well, I was going to sing and dance. <laughs> I got my friend Cherry Stone from up in Tupelo, Mississippi to teach me some steps to the Charleston and then I learned a song that I sang with my social club sisters we didn't have sororities and I was a loving laughing Lockhart and wore a tiny gold heart around my my neck well I we would get up in the dorm sometimes and sing those you know off color little songs so I chose one of those. <laughs> and I got back home, and Mama said, have you been thinking about it? I said, yeah, Mama, I'm going to sing and dance. She said, honey, why? <laughs> I said, because I want to. Well, she said, do your, ta do your song and your dance. And when I finished, she said, oh, my God. <laughs> honey, it's on stage. It'll be okay on stage, but let's write a little poem to go with it so you can use your expression. And my mother and I wrote a little poem to go with my song and my dance. And you know, I still remember it. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to do it for you. Come, let me take you back to the year 1923. That was the year that the flapper came to be with her Chanel dress so short and tight. She sang boop boopy doo and danced the Charleston all night. 
but the Roaring Twenties weren't quite that tame because those were the years when the Red Hot Mamas came to fame. And down in the speakeasies, two old off-keyed pianos, they wailed their tunes in any old manner. They call me flame and mamie. I'm a sofa scorcher. I'm the hottest baby in town. And when it comes to loving, I'm a human oven. I really burn them down. They holler, water. I really burn them down. <laughs> that was my talent. <laughs> Well, the night of the contest came, and I was standing on the stage with the other contestants in the high school auditorium in my sister's yellow 100% cotton evening gown. It was the one that she had worn up to Memphis, Tennessee to the Maid of Cotton contest. Now, she didn't, win, she didn't win this contest. Mama said she did really, she did good, it did what she's supposed to, but she had a tummy virus, so her color and her sparkle was off just a bit. <laughs> well, Miss, the MC, Mr. Too Fat Fagin, <laughs> had an envelope in his hand, and he was ready to announce the winner. But out of the corner of my eye in the wings, I saw something sparkling, and I looked over, and it was Bonnie Beth Craig, the reigning Miss Aberdeen with her crown on. And you know, just for a moment, I wondered what it would feel like to wear a crown. But I wasn't going to wear a crown. I was going to Yellowstone. Well, Mr. Too Fat Fagin began to read the card. Second runner up to Miss Aberdeen, Sue Ann Harmon. First runner up to Miss Aberdeen is Barbara Jo Taylor. And the new Miss Aberdeen, who will go to the Miss Mississippi pageant in Vicksburg, Mississippi, is Jane Owen. <laughs> and Bonnie Beth put the crown on my head. Wow. <laughs> and I made the walk down the ramp that had been especially built for this contest in the high school auditorium. And I smiled at everybody I knew on this side and even those I didn't, and all those on the other side. And when I got to the end to make that turn, I saw my mama. She was smiling, and I knew that she knew that she had at last taught her baby girl to sparkle. <laughs> Thank you.